please give a warm welcome to writer, director, Michael Showalter. Hello. Hello. Thanks for being here, Michael. Thank you for having me. This is so wonderful. Um, I knew that I was going to watch something really intelligent. Five minutes and 30 seconds, so thereabouts. There's a scene that you inserted where we watch her take her makeup off. And it's not this happy-go-lucky movie. It's like there's... From the get-go, you let me know that we're going to have depth and we're going to have care in this film. Can you yeah, tell us? You, you were exactly right. That's the first moment where hopefully the audience gets some clue that there's more going on here than just um, a conventional romantic comedy. We get to see Anne taking her makeup off. She's, she's put so much effort into presenting herself to the ex-husband, you know, showing, sort of wanting to see him to see her the way, you know, she wants, she doesn't want him to see that she's hurting. Mm -hmm. And so we get this moment where we get to see there's more going on, mm -hmm. both with her character, but also in the movie. And then on the same line, the fact that uh, in, a, in a different romantic comedy film, we will have, you know, a woman need, that needs to be saving or, you know, that things are not going well. That's not the case in your film. She, she doesn't need this in no. her life. She's fulfilled. She's fulfilled. She's, she says it. She says, I have you. I have my daughter. I have my gallery. I have my friends. And I even think she's like, she has, I, you know, I say this, like she has no trouble getting like having sex if she wanted to have, like, like she's sexually active. She, I think there's men that are very interested in her. Um, so like she's not lonely, she's not any of those things. Um, she's hurting, but that's not at all what's going on for her. I think she's reached a point in her life where she's like, I, I'm, I'm good, mm -hmm. I'm good, yeah. But when you were writing the, piece, the, the, the script, you were conscious of the fact that you're breaking the tropes of what yeah. audiences expect. Yes, but it wasn't intentional. Like I want to do it a different way. It's I. I didn't. I, I. like this character this way. I don't like those. I don't like to feel like she's weak or a victim or any of those things. I. I, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it wasn't so much of a conscious effort to change the tropes as much as it was to create a character that I really liked. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Um, in other films, the conflict is amongst them. I find, I find it so interesting that the conflict comes from the outside. It's outside forces that are impeding. It's her too. I think, I think you know, a great moment in the movie, and it's for me anyway, that it's something that is this moment where he says, so you're ashamed. Mm -hmm. And it's this moment where, that felt really important where she says, yes, I am. I am ashamed. Mm -hmm. And Anne gives this great reading of the line where she's ashamed about so many things. It's not just their relationship that she's ashamed of. It's, it's, it's the, the condition of being ashamed. It's a much bigger idea. But specifically, I do think Solen is struggling with her own bias against what she's doing. He says, if the roles were reversed, would, would, any, would it be any different? And would anyone judge it? And she said, yes, Izzy did. I judged it. Tracy judged it. We do judge that. We do, I do, am judgmental of the age difference between Daniel and Ava. And so she, and that's why, not to go down too far down the rabbit hole, that's why it was important to me that then Ava says, I'm leaving him. Okay. Because it challenges Solen, Anne's character, to question, and or when, the, when Tracy says, you know, uh, well, why is it, it's okay if I do it, but if Daniel does it, it's bad. And she says, yeah, because I love you and I hate him. It challenges Solen to realize, I'm so sure that I think Daniel's happier. Mm -hmm. Like, she's so sure that Daniel is happier with this new person. Mm -hmm. Because that is a trope, that the husband leaves the wife for the newer model and is happier. And he's the villain. Yes, well. and the, the ex-wife is left holding the bag. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that there is, that's not true, too, but I wanted it to not be as simple as that, as clear-cut as that that actually, yeah, he did this, but Daniel's kind of running away from himself. Daniel's in full flight from himself. And so I like that Daniel, you like to, you know, you hear Hayes kind of say, hey, sorry about Ava. 
you know, and he doesn't really want to talk about that. Daniel's going to have to work on himself a little, a little bit too. I, I mentioned when I briefly met you that I'm a big fan of your work, and and one thing that I've always admired about what you do is how delineated the characters are. It's like they're fully three-dimensional. You mentioned Daniel in a different film. He would just be the bad guy, you know, the villain. But instead, we see a complexity in even the smaller characters, easy, et cetera. You know, can you tell us about, about fleshing out each, even if the smaller characters, you flesh them out? Yeah, I mean, thank you. That's very nice. I mean, for me, it's, it's about, like I said, it's about in order for me to really root for Solène and to feel like Solène's character has had a full catharsis, she needs to confront some of her own problems. She needs to break through some of her own um, internal obstacles. And so that sort of, it's like necessitates it. Well, if Solène is gonna come full circle, then that means she has to have been wrong about things too. Mm -hmm. She can't just be perfect. She can't just be, you know, this kind of noble, main character who can do no wrong and, and, and is, all these bad things have happened to her and she's perfect. No, she's also wrong about things. Correct. And so her character, need, so in a weird way, it's like it starts with, with that and then it necessitates, oh, well, how are I gonna do that? Well, maybe she thinks Daniel and Ava are, and, you know, are happy, but they're not. And maybe that's an important lesson for her to learn that like, you know, you can't judge someone, there's a saying, you can't judge someone else's insides by looking at their outsides, something to that effect. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and so I just, I don't know, I just, I like, I like being able to tell a little story about every character, you know, the idea that you could make a whole movie about every one of them and we would kind of know what, 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 what had happened to them or something H to that. Hay's effect. journey is also really interesting. He's like finding himself and we actually watch that happening. Yeah. Is that something that was in the original book or you, you calibrate it. Um, I, I think there is some of that in the original book. I mean, I'm fascinated by this character who is from, I think, my own interest level, more in my own interest level in these young pop stars that are so uh, in the in the social like conversation. Who we're, we see, we see them on social media. We see their lives. We see there's movies made about them, Taylor Swift and Harry Styles, and uh, on and on that there's this like, and my relating to it from my own life, that there's this like moment where you need to start to understand who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really compelling. Like what could Hayes, what could Hayes's vulnerability be that, w that could actually be compelling to an audience? You can't make him being rich and famous like woe is me. Like it's really hard to be rich and famous. It's not that. What is really hard is, do, is, is this real? Did I earn this? Mm -hmm. And that is really interesting to me. And um, he's, you know, when he says, um, if, if I, uh, you know, I would have taken Tiny Tim if I'd gotten offered that job, but I took the, I took the boy band instead, but if I'd done Tiny Tim, someone would else would have been me in the band. Mm -hmm. And then who would I be? And I think that's a really interesting conundrum that Hayes has to deal with, which is, is this real? Mm -hmm. And so his struggle is to become an authentic person. And I think what he sees in Solène is an authentic human being mm -hmm. who knows herself and knows what art is and knows what good art is. And so he's struggling to be an, an am I an artist? Am I a real artist or am I just an actor mm -hmm. who's pretending to be an artist like the monkeys? And no offense to the monkeys, they're great. I love the monkeys. Um, <laughs> But uh, things got really weird when I said that about the monkeys. No, um, but uh, but um, so so yeah. So I mean, it's sort of like she she gives him she gives him some much needed confidence mm -hmm. in his own in his own journey as an artist. The film is incredible. When I was watching, I was just so enthralled and entertained. But I couldn't help but I'm I'm too analytical. I I could there's a powerful message in this film about how us as a society, how quick to judge we are. And when I watched, soon after I watched the film, you know, we had um, Princess uh, Middleton, um, you know, the, her cancer thing and the, everybody in the media was judging and saying things and then it turns out 
that it was a different story. And I, it was that something, am I reading too much into the film that, you know, the message of this film about, you know. I do think, I mean, I'm not on social media. I mean, and I've been on social media and I'm not anymore. And um, I do wish that we could just be nicer to each other mm -hmm. as a society. Um, I'm really okay with difference. I'm really okay with live and let live. You know, I made a movie about, about Tammy Faye Baker and there were people that were mad at me and, and us for, make, for not being more critical of her and for not being more critical of, of her community. And it's like, that's not, like, I don't have time to like take that on. If you wanna do that, do that. Just let me do what I wanna do. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the message that I, I wanna say is like, I'm okay with you wanna, you wanna do anything you want, you can do that, as long as you let me do what I wanna do. Correct. And so th that's my bone, that's the bone I wanna pick, is I'm actually okay with people that are very different than me, mm -hmm. very different than me. I just want them to be okay with me. And so, so Len and Hayes are an avatar for difference in, in all walks of society. Beautiful. Because we're really not that different. Correct. We're not. I, I've made, I've worked all over, I've been all over, I've, I've met people, I see people, and when all that stuff is, when that smoke is cleared and it's just people, it's the same. Mm -hmm. My heart leapt when, towards the end of the film, you know, we, you, you go to black and we see five years later. Um, it, it, and I, I read afterwards that that's, that's not in the in book, the right, right. that you, you shifted the yes. ending. Thank you for doing yes. that. You know, can you tell us about that genesis of shifting the ending? I end mean, for me, I, I love romantic comedy. And this isn't really a romantic comedy. It's a romantic dramedy. It's a romantic drama with comedy in it. Or it starts as a romantic comedy and then turns into a romantic drama. Um, but like for me as a fan of film and a fan of genre, that's just how the movie had to end. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even, for me, it wasn't even about the book. And I know I've sort of get, get in trouble with fans of the book for saying that. But like this is not a tragic love story in the genre of movie that we've made. And so if it were to end a different way, you'd have had to have another director make the movie, mm -hmm. which I'm t would be fine. It's just not the movie I could have made. Um, so like I said, as a fan of this kind of movie, you want some hope, some optimist, some sense of optimism that at least there's a chance. We're not saying it's a happily ever after. They're definitely gonna work out. You know, when Harry met Sally, it's like they're old, they're sitting on the couch talking about how they've been married now for 60 years. It's not that, it's just, maybe. Mm -hmm. And so as a fan of the genre, I want the maybe ending, the let's go get coffee ending. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it made me think about Tootsie. Yes, exactly. The, the you know, where Dustin 100%. tells Jessica Lang, you know, and they look at each other. It, 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 yeah, it's a beautiful, ambiguous, terrific ending. Um, you also switched the the ages right. of the characters. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love the fact that Izzy, the daughter, is actually 16, yes. correct? And then I did the math, and you know, she must have had her, and must have had her when she was 24. Right. Yeah, can you tell us about that shift? J uh, well, a lot of, some of the choices, so I came onto the movie, uh, I had read a draft of the script that was written by Jennifer Westfeld. So, so I actually came into the process the movie had been in development for a little while, so there was a, a, a fair amount of things had already been sort of like tonally, they had already made some decisions about, we wanna do this as a romantic comedy. If you've read the book, it's much more of a serious tone. Um, we want Izzy to be older. In the book, Izzy is 13 years old. And so the sex is much more sort of scandalous in the, the sort of the fact that Solen is, is it, it, the, there's a much weirder dynamic going on there and that Izzy in the book loves Hayes. And so it there's an interesting and a very interesting thing in the book that's there's this like she's almost betraying the daughter. Mm -hmm. Like she is, it's what Daniel says, like don't you think it's weird that you're doing this with the guy that she's had the poster of next to her bed. In the book that would be true. Um, and I think 
to the credit of Kathy and Jennifer and Anne and other people pre who preceded me, they just felt like that was too much to take on to make the kind of movie that we were trying to make, which was, wasn't really about that. Um, and, and so it softened some of the edges a little bit. And um, I felt like when I came in and I did have a kind of an idea about some new directions I wanted to take the story and the script, that those were things that I thought were smart decisions, that really good decisions that they had been made, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Anne Hathaway was attached before you yes. came on board. Mm -hmm. You know, tell us about working. She is terrific. Yeah, in this. she's incredible. She's phenomenal. She's incredible. I love Anne's career. I've been following her career. She's someone I definitely wanted to work with. Um, there's just something about her that's very. Um, she's obviously like a real movie star, but there's this quality of her that you. I don't know. There's an earnestness to her. There's a sincerity mm -hmm. there that I really identify with. We're both from New Jersey, which obviously is oh, a huge Jersey. connection. Um, Where in New Jersey? I'm from Princeton, New Jersey. I went to Heightstown uh, uh, Prep School, oh. uh, Petty School. Oh, Petty, oh my yeah. God, yes, yeah. of course. My, my, one of my best friend's mother, um, Ann Seltzer, was the headmaster. Oh of my Petty. God, Anne's, I'm on the board of Petty, <laughs> and Ann is the one that got oh, so, me on the so, board of Petty. So Ann's son, Neil, is one of my best friends growing oh up. Oh my God. Well, yeah. we'll carry this. <laughs> so, I went to, I went to Princeton High School. Oh, I went I know. to Princeton wow. High School. So, um, no wonder I love well, this you is why so we much. connect. This is why we connect. See, see, New Jersey people really connect. It's a weird thing. Yeah. Um, it's the garden state. It's the garden state. If you didn't know, and Bruce Springsteen's from New Jersey as is Bon, jo jo bon Jovi. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and us and us. Um, but uh, Anne Hathaway. And so yeah, I mean, she, just that, just that that you know, I like I like, I'm drawn to actors that feel. I don't know what the word is. There's a weakness. There's so, there's not a weakness, but there's a vulnerability, vulnerability there. Yeah. There's something. There's something about them that makes you feel like you want to, like you, you see there's something about them that they feel like they have something to prove, maybe that's mm -hmm. what it is. They have something you want to prove. Sally Field is someone else I've loved working with. It's the same feeling of like, I got something to prove. And I feel that from them. And so, and so um, working with Anne was just incredible. She's, you know, she's, her, her commitment level, her passion for what she does, her craft, um, we we got very close to doing this project. Was there any discussion that the, the irony that is Anne, who's the famous one? Definitely. And, and when I see certain things, that, well, you mean just that she's more famous than he is? Correct. Yeah. I mean, I thought I actually felt like it was important that he that the our actor not be, we you know Timothy Chalamet or 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 that we go get Harry Styles to play that main character. I liked that that we flipped it. Um, and, um, but I, I actually thought what you were saying was is there's a lot of echoes in what's happening to Solen in terms of beats. Anne is somebody who's had a lot of backlash in the media and whose social media has a lot of opinions about Anne and has lived her life kind of in, under that telescope, under, under that microscope. And so there are moments where when Anne is being followed by the paparazzi and she's just had enough, like, I, I do think that that reverberates as like, that's Solen, but that's also Anne Hathaway's life. And so I, I, I like those, some of that duality is also really interesting to me. Um, from, from a filmmaking point of view, you approach the film with a female gaze. Uh, you know, we, you shoot it, it's just very sexy, but a, a different director would have given us this sort of male gazed approach to, to the whole thing. Um, I, 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 my mother, is was a is is a, a feminist literary critic. Uh, she was the first chairwoman of the Princeton English Department, mm. um, and had and so and so her her friends her my world I grew up around not a sort of militant feminist perspective, but a very nuanced, uh, highly academic feminist literary perspective. Um, it's what I heard in the di at the dinner table. It's just what's in my brain, um, and ta her talking about her male colleagues, her talking about everything around her, and and really me hearing, and also 
being having a very strong woman modeling for you know modeling what that looks like for me I just absorbed it and and then I think in college I majored in uh, semiotics which I don't don't ask me what it is I couldn't tell you but um, <laughs> but but uh, we do talk we did talk a lot about male gaze in in the semiotic major male gaze is a very big part of it because male semiotics is all about Symbol, sim, symbolism and media and things like that. And so I did understand what the male gaze is and to the extent that I have it, but I'm very keyed into it and sort of like you said in the beginning, well, why did you make her this way and not that way? The male gaze is not appealing to me. It's un I don't find it aesthetically appealing, it's aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't like it. When I see it, I don't like it. Um, and, and, and I'm like a guy, you know, like I, I it's, 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 I just find it icky. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like, there were some things where I, you know, but I, one thing that happened, the being, a being a director in this day and age is I'm constantly learning my own, um, like, you know, as, as sort of like progressive as I think I am, I'm always finding out that I have more to, more to learn. And, and, there, and I can always, that like, my mind has been really opened to even my own shortcomings in this area. And so there were even with the sex in this one or two shots where, oh no, that's, that's, that's the male gaze. And I'd be like, oh, okay, you know. Um, but for the most part, this is what I like. This is the kind of sensuality that I like to see. Um, so it wasn't like a big decision or a big discussion. But were you, were you conscious about the fact that, I mean, the movie's sexy. Yeah. And it was, it was the, were you conscious about the fact I need, I, need, I want it yes. to be Very sensuous. Much so. Very much so. And, and we, we, we talked about that. Anne felt that way. Anne felt very strongly. This movie needs to be sexy. This movie needs to be sensual. Um, all of those things. And so it wasn't so much a question of how are we going to do that as much as that that needs to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I mean, I will say one thing, which is, the first kiss, which I don't know what it was like in the theater tonight, but in the first kiss in lots of screenings, this is a very sophisticated audience, um, audience goes nuts. The Did audience you guys go like, nuts? The audience is like screaming. They're freaking out. <laughs> and um, one of the things that I was very conscious of, and this was something that, that, that you know, with the actors I had to do, is to keep them apart. There's an instinct that the actors have to want to get closer to each other. So in the in the trailer, they're they're wanting to drift towards each other. In the in in her house, when he's taught when they're talking and she's making the sandwich, he's wanting to get closer to her. Mm -hmm. In the gallery, he's wanting to get closer to her. In the in the in the in Glendale, he's wanting to get close. And I'm going, stay away from her. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you gotta keep keep your space so that there's this like sexy space in between them that's not being, that, that they're not stepping into each other's space. Mm -hmm. So there's, so, so I think that, that that was that, so it's a restraint. It's like the, 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 the sexiness is in what is in the, is in how willing they both are to hold off mm -hmm. and to with, and to, and to, so, so that by the time they do finally kiss, the whole audience is like fucking kiss already. Like, you know, we're, you know, we're dying for it. Or at least that was the hope. That was the hope. That's what I was trying to accomplish is that by the time they finally do kiss as an audience, like you're like begging for it because it's like you, you, the tension at that point is, is, but they've also like earned it. They've, they've shared, they've, 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 tr there's been a transaction between them of, I'm going to tell you something about myself that, that shows you that I'm vulnerable and that I'm like, not that I'm here for this and vice versa. And they've done that by that point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she tells the story about Daniel and he's told her about his own insecurity about being in the boy band. So that by the time they kiss, they've kind of earned it. Mm -hmm. um, I was a big admirer of the production design. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I love the fact that the gallery at first, when we first see it, is kind of a steer. And then as the movie progresses and she becomes happier in the relationship, the gallery, the colors, the colors and yeah. then the house as well. Things start, you know, we start seeing brighter colors and stuff. Can you t talk well, about Well, definitely in the, the house, I think, uh, the house I think stays the same, but the gallery definitely gets brighter as, as the story goes along. Um, but it's not so much to reflect, I will say, 
the, the final scene in the gallery, it's just an explosion of color. Color, yeah. And it's not so much to say that in the beginning she's not happy or that she's, you, you know, that she's gray in the beginning and colorful at the end, but maybe that she's, she's you know, um, unclosed. Mm -hmm. she's, she's closed off in the beginning and at the end she's completely open. Yeah, it seems like she's comfortable and she's in a good in a good place. Exactly. You know, tell us about uh, working with the boy band, creating that from scratch. Well, the I have an incredible, incredible collaborators, incredible choreographer Danny Fatale, this unbelievable songwriter Savin Katecha, our costume designer Jackie Demeterio. So I mean, like the look of them, the sound, the feel. I was just uh, working with incredible professionals. We did what what we wanted was for the band to be cool. We weren't trying to make fun of boy bands. We weren't trying to uh, satirize those them or or anything like that. We wanted to celebrate them and and they're fun. They're sexy. They're cool. They're they're all those things. The songs are like catchy. All of those things. And so that was what we were trying to do. And to and to put and to sort of create a very contemporary feeling boy band. They don't dress the same. A lot of boy bands from when I grew up, there was a kind of uniformity to the way they looked. Whereas this, they're all different. They're all have their own style. And so even with the, you know, they, they did a boy, kind of a boy band boot camp where they learned the microphone technique. They learned how to interact with each other, but also how to do the choreography and still have a kind of individuality. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you watch them, it's like they're all doing their choreography, but each one of them has a slightly different flavor. And um, the, those guys got very close. Um, it was sort of like a click. It was like, oh, here comes August Moon. Like, you know, like, uh, and they were, but they were great. And when we did shoot those scenes, it was like they had rehearsed their act so many times that it was like a rock concert. We shot it like a concert. We just had six cameras going, let them go. They had their whole set prepared and they would do their set and then we would, we would just shoot it like it was a documentary. After I finished watching the film, I said there were two things that could have screwed up this movie big time if the boy band was not as as legit as it comes across. And then the ending, you could have screwed up that ending. Yeah. And those two things, you aced them. Yeah, like Coachella was, for me, that was like, we had to, the, the scene where she watches him perform that is the most important moment in the movie for the audience to understand who Hayes is in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and to be Solen in that audience, watching them and seeing how good they are and seeing how fun they are and seeing how much everyone around them is affected by them, I think helps us as an audience understand who he is so that Solen, so that we're in Solen's mind when she mm -hmm. meets him we get it oh he's that guy that we saw be like crushing it at Coachella mm -hmm. um humor you use humor in, in the big sick as well we laugh in the most honest unexpected moments you know can you tell us about how you use and work with humor mm -hmm. you know I'm thinking about the scene how they meet um you know that she the bathroom and it's a screwball situation and it's funny but it it's grounded at the I same time I think I've just I mean I mean I have I come from comedy that's my background that's my point of view so I'm always in life and in my work kind of like humor is part of my me coping mechanism and so it just comes very naturally to me that like when something serious happens my first thought is to make a joke um oftentimes I have to not say what I'm thinking but but as a comedian, as a comic thinking person, and that's what other comedians are like too, you just, your instinct is to make a joke. Mm -hmm. And so I, and then in just the, the kinds of movies I like, the kinds of plays I like, there's this blend of humor and drama. So my favorite kinds of straight plays are, you know, it's usually funny for the first two thirds. It's just, you're laughing, 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 and then like they knock you out in the, th mm -hmm. in the, in the final act kind of. And same with a film, it's sort of like heavy, ideas, heavy themes, real ideas, but that are being, but you're using the humor hopefully to kind of change, a little change up, a little switch, a little a little palette changer. Um, it's just how I am with that. Yeah. And I meant to ask you earlier, the, the dynamic that you create from the get-go that, that Anne's character is so relatable to us. She's like, you know, 
we connect so much to her, like in every man or every woman, and then is the entryway. How if is that part of the novel? But or or you? Um, she's a little different in the book than the novel. In the novel, she's a little more not someone that you would say was is an every woman. Um, I love the movie Notting Hill. I've made no bones about that. This is an homage to that movie in many ways. Um, so she's our Hugh Grant. Anne Hathaway is our Hugh Grant. Mm -hmm. And Silver Lake is our Notting Hill. Um, and, and so it's important that for me that the audience feel on some level like that's me. I'm her. I'm the normal person who meets the like biggest star in the world. So it's important that that character have qualities that are normal. Of course, she looks like Anne Hathaway and her life is very fabulous in all the sorts of ways. But that's what movies are. And the same thing is true in Notting Hill. It's like... He, he owns this cutest little bookshop, and he has these great friends, and he has this cute little apartment, and da, da, da. And as a lover of those movies, I sort of like, that's a kind of Hollywood version of normal. But, but there is a sense of, of there, is a, there is a fallibility there. Mm -hmm. there. There is a sense of, you know, her car, she just has a little car, it's got, you know, stuff all over it, it's, you know, cluttered and all these things. She's not... She's not some otherworldly being, and I, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Well, you're awesome, Michael. Thank you. And thank, thank you. you so much for being thank here you. today. Thank you for having me. Please come back. Uh, anytime. Anytime. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.